Well, congrats to him. Ooh, ooh, melee units. Please give me more melee units and less grievances. I mean, grievances I don't really care about. I should actually, oh, I should have gone 100% more grievances thinking about it. But there's my whole body, two diplomatic video. <laughs> I really have lost it this game. Two diplomacy victory points, two apostles. It's a beautiful wonder. That was my second rush with Imhotep. I need to think of another good rush. There we go, they did it for me. 100% more grievances. Oh, ranged gets more combat strength. That's annoying. Oh, that's the, that's the Mayans doing that. They know exactly how to annoy me. Never mind, it's fine. One attack, two attack like that. Perfect. And then we just pull my units round and we go after another city. Well, that was quick. Managed to get that city surrounded almost instantaneously. Oh, not quite with the crusade, but look at that sieged already. So we'll do all the big damage. Bam. That's pretty effective. We'll take it. For my religion, I'm going to put down stupas as my building because I really need amenities. All of my cities are very unhappy right now. Very unhappy indeed. But, you know, it could be worse. Oh, they didn't kill my knight. They didn't kill my knight. I might have cleared this bar of encampment. I think I've done it. Oh, that battle raged on for centuries, but we did it. Oh, the most ineffective trebuchet army attacking these samurais, but we've done it. We've pegged them back. We have finally liberated this corner of the world. Everyone will celebrate for years. One attack, two attack, and yeah, that city's pretty much dead now, so we might as well just have a little bit of fun, do the pillaging that we want, like so, then we can take the city. Beautiful. I mean, I'm producing two muskets per turn at the moment just by praying them into existence from this city, and oh, there's actually no iron here. Which is a little bit of a shame, but you know, I could just pray two knights into existence and in you know, instead. I don't get my Macedon bonus for, you know, getting any science when I build them, but honestly at this point, just reinforcements are all I need. Korea were offering me a crazy peace deal a second ago. Do I want it? How many turns until I can flip on Persia? Ten turns. Hmm, yeah, I mean I could get some gold, or I could just not career out the game. I feel like that's more satisfying, so I'll do that. So I managed to find Jebel Barkal that actually hits one, two, three, four, five, six cities, I think. So this is gonna give me a bunch of extra faith. Oh, it's so close to being finished. In fact, actually, I can just go on oh, no, it. That is, that is being worked. I can chop that down. Look at this. Six iron per turn is kind of irrelevant. Actually, no, it's not. I'm building like so many knights every turn that it isn't irrelevant at all. What am I talking about? Plus four faith to all cities are within six towers. Again, that actually lets me pray them in. Thinking about it, this is the Grand Master's Chapel's dream. A wonderful, wonderful wonder. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six of my cities. So that actually would have given me the achievement if I hadn't already had it. Where's my burly musket? Oh, that's actually, yeah. I mean, because I, I might have destroyed a couple of roads accidentally. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of time to get to the front line. As is my battering round. Wow, that's really, really slow. Never mind, but still, we'll finish this city off next turn, seemingly. But this is looking pretty tragic for the Mayans now. You should have made peace of me earlier when I was going to offer it, because I thought I was in a stalemate here. And then I remembered I was Macedon, and I wait for no one. If I look at loyalty, yeah, look at that. Oh, you can tell when a war's dragged on. The Mayans have three cities, so that's four or less, which means all the luxuries they have in the game are piling into those cities, yeah? And if I look at the loyalty, minus six. So they've got at least, I mean, they're, they're so unhappy. War weariness has piled onto them. I wonder if Korea's in the same position, actually. No, Korea somehow staying happy. So yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you can't win. When you take no war weariness, there's no need to ever make peace. And I just produce more and more and more science every time I make a unit. You just Never let your foot off the accelerator. Just keep going. Oh, the Zulu are denouncing me. Oh no, what do I, what will Ursa do? What am I going to do? What am I going to say to my children and friends? Oh, Korea in there to stop me actually managing to wrap myself around this city. Oh, good play. Good play from a sort of weird ally in this case. But luckily for me, my five strength uh, unit can come through now. And yeah, we've got my general involved. One attack, 
And is there another? Oh no, I've run out of movement. Oh, normally, what's the point in having a double attack unit if they don't double attack? One, two, three. Trebuchets are so powerful. And bring my general forward so that you can move and fire. Oh, I love that bug. The, the fact that it's still in the game. You know, someone would say, oh, well, clearly it wasn't a bug. Clearly it was intentional. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> it really wasn't. It's one cheeky little play that I'm making at the moment is retainers. Now, one amenity for cities with a garrisoned unit. One of the big things about going so wide and having so many cities is that amenities can be a little bit of a problem. A spearman has only one maintenance cost and I can still get them because I have yet to unlock military tactics. So, what I'm going to be doing is basically using my obsessively large, it's just insanely large faith per turn to just go spearman and then spearmen and then like just keep going around all of my cities buying spearmen each time I do I get a beautiful plus one amenity it's going to make the overall yields and gold and science and culture and everything wonderful of my empire increase beautifully now all these are gonna do is just sit here and not really do anything just just chill and because they only have a small amount of maintenance, they really don't cost me anything at all. I mean, technically they have a maintenance of two rather than one, so they are costing me a little bit per turn, but I have a big glut of uh, money at the moment, so it really doesn't matter. Otherwise, we're down to the last Korean city, and Kaguna has decided to make itself tribute as well because it refuses to give up. Like, I respect the, you know, the hustle, but I would prefer it if they just conceded at this point because, like... I mean, it's the inevitable, really. There's the 10 pop Mayan city gone, which means there's one round there. How much population have they got? 14 population in three cities. We well, you know one of them is there. Can we figure out where the other one is? Is that a thing? I've got no idea where the other one is. I mean, at this point, you must want peace. Only if I give them a lot of money. I like their style. Maybe once the emergency's gone, they'll finally realize that they may well have lost. The world's first enormous city. Pella is swole. Look at it. Doing nicely. Starting to generate endless, like, pointless units now just to generate some science. Kaguna, I think, should just about be able to fall this turn. If I bring my knight round, it's a little more powerful. Look at that. City-state taken. And we swoop on Korea's last city. Oh end of an era it's gonna be weird not fighting korea like i feel like i've done it pretty much all game well something relatively good to note actually all of persia's cities are medieval walls so i do need to upgrade my battering rams i've got a few of them running around siege towers are the bare minimum in these fights it's always a shame that i like it when you can use battering rams i find taking walls down is way easier than trying to bypass them all the time I guess that's the point, isn't it? They get harder as you get technologically more advanced. Otherwise, it would be a bit, uh, bit pointless, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, hey, military emergency. It's looking good. I'm actually going to sell my diplomatic favor for some gold because honestly, there's no point in me keeping it when I'm on minus 15 per turn. I might as well vlog it. Hey, look at that with my spearman trick. We've got 29 extra amenities coming into my cities. That's pretty good. If I didn't have so many of them, that would be better. But what are you going to do? One, two, three trebuchet attacks. And then I've got the siege tower in. I can start to actually do some damage now with my regular units, which I'm going to do. Even my knights can get involved. I'm just kind of ready to take career out of the picture, really. I'm hoping this is going to be a pretty quick one. We look like we're actually getting through now which is wonderful to see one attack a two attack a three attack a four attack and i think this damaged knight is going to do the honors of bringing korea to their end when i saw them with 250 science or whatever it was i was a little bit mm, concerned to put it lightly but we did a good job persia's next and if i can fight through persia like they're gonna be tough we should be able to get to Alundi. So it's it's this city and this city. Those are our two targets right now. Yeah, Persia's tough. Persia is really, really tough. So we're gonna be we're gonna be hard pressed. Luckily though, our army could only really be described as endless. So, you know, I feel like we've got the troops to make this work. It's just about, you know, using them. 
All right, I'm going to take peace with Mayans because Bandar Brunei is theirs and as long as I'm not fighting them, I can actually get some gold from them, which I'm going to do now. Oh, beautiful. And it's uh, it's one less person to have to worry about, being utterly honest. i am sort of got to that point where it's like, like I've beaten you. I, I can leave you with a couple of like really pointless cities if you want. It's fine. Printing. Three combat strength on everyone. Goodness me, that's going to be helpful. Persia just took an Alanda. Ooh, World Congress might be able to meet. I don't think I'm going to be able to join that fight, but it's always worth keeping an eye on it. Grants a three trader in the city. Very nice. We like a good Admiral that gives a trader, especially when there are some juicy, juicy trade routes coming up at the moment. Hang on, look at this. Ten culture per turn. Oh, yes, please. Oh, that's uh, very ballsy. Mayans actually wanted to join in on the emergency against Cyrus. I had one turn of alliance left, so I couldn't join in on the emergency, which is really annoying. I so rarely get to actually join in on an emergency, so uh, what are you going to do? Bologna just appeared and I can immediately seize it. 344 science per turn. A beautiful stuff. All of these trade routes. Look at these. Yum, yum, yum. So much culture per turn. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I always love the fact that if I ever need more units, it's just like, have some muskets, pray them in. So do you think that Persia likes or dislikes it when you surprise war them? Is it like a, oh, I respect the craft. You know, I like a surprise war. That's what I do. Or do you think they're like, mm, no, no, that's something I do and nobody else is allowed to do it. <laughs> it could go either way. Wars of religion. I just picked up this card because I actually do follow a different religion to Persia. This is going to be very helpful. Retainers is good. Republican. All of these cards are quite good. I'm going to have to get rid of Raid just because it'll slow me down a little bit. But I mean, Raid is a really good card, so probably I didn't want to get rid of that. But the plus four combat strength is mighty. Let me just see if that goes through. Yep, it does go through because I count as following my religion and they count as following theirs. Perfect. Won't work on the Zulu, but it does work on Persia. I'm literally just flooding the Persian defenses with troops. We are going to attack them from every single angle we can simultaneously. I do not want them to be able to organize a resistance, any form of defense. We're just going in. We're going in. We're going in hot. I'm flooding them. I'm attacking encampments. We're pushing through. I'm doing this systematically, methodically. My knights are rushing through. We've already sieged cities. Again, these are all medieval walls. So getting in may prove a little bit tricky, but once we're in, we should be fine. And surprise, I have an army coming from the other direction as well. Ha 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 ha, love it. These courses, oh yeah. Now I've got intel on their movements. I am um, wars of religion. We should be absolutely fine. Let's see what sort of defenses they have. Okay, they are doing nine, seven. Yeah, they really don't have very much strength. I think immortals are what they're using to man their walls at the moment. They, my galleys are only taking 25 damage on an attack. That's... What? Oh, I'll take that. That is a result for old Ursa. I mean, in fact, we've even got we've got the city totally surrounded by muskets already. That that was quick. Um, can I pull my trebuchet round? And yep, I can move and fire. This is cool. Hannibal, you get to the front. Uh, actually, you're not a good general. You are not a good general at all. You are not helping. Ah oh, well, I'm just gonna attack and see what happens. There's the first attack. There's the second attack. Oh, the city's got slightly more than half health, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it this turn. Alas. Oh, it's close there. Oh no, it did. It does. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that was effective. Well, all right then. I'm going to use my knights to flush out any uh, units. I think as good as pillaging is. I think just attacking defenses and making sure that we knock out enemy units has got to be probably be more effective. Ah, who am I kidding? <laughs> pillage, 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 pillage. Just pillage everything. One, two, and three. Is that going to do it? Oh, that one doesn't quite work. But I mean, yeah, we're pushing. We're pushing pretty hard. These muskets are so far in advance of anything Persia has. And that plus four I'm getting here, that's really handy. Something not to forget as well. My units will heal every time I kill a city with a wonder. Now that, oh, this is a wonder city. So as soon as I kill that one, all of my units will heal. That's just marvelous. So when you have three unit healing, you might as well just attack with everything you've got. Because honestly, if it's healing, 
It's their experience, it's a little bit of wall damage, it's all the fun stuff that you've come to expect and love from Macedon. Uh, hang on, let's just quickly get you to hit and then hit. Lovely, now we can heal and bam, everything's on full health again. Beautiful. So I have education, which is awesome because I've just picked up Newton as well. And Newton gives me universities provide plus two science and I can pop them immediately into my campus inside my capital. Bam, 420 science. Now, universities are really, really good. Namely, and firstly, I have two scientific city-states. So I'm getting plus two, plus two, plus two. So a university I think is giving me eight science. I might be wrong. 10 science, because I can't count. There you go. 10 science for a university. That's pretty awesome. I also had universities everywhere over my Korean cities that I'd taken. I just didn't know what they were. They were these sort of flaming buildings that were burning away in the night sky and I was looking at them thinking, what are these? And everyone sort of in my nation is going, do you think we should put them out? Do, do you think we should do something about it? And I'm sort of going, hmm, yeah, but we're not sure exactly what they are. So why would I put them out? And everyone's going, yeah, yeah, good, good, good point there, Ursa. But as I'm beelining towards military science now, I need raw science output so my pillaged gold yeah if the universities are giving me a good chunk of science every time i buy them i'm gonna buy them oh what an offer deal what an offer deal all of those luxuries for open borders how about no one more city taken okay now we're on to the capital oh lots of boosts look at that it's all about just making sure that my muskets can get in and they have good raw attacks but i mean look at this we're going to be able to absolutely munch through just run in and go one attack two attack three attack encampment's gone perfect and now I guess we just keep attacking the capital because, you know, I have endless strength. I might as well. Looking at it, Sparta might actually be a more difficult take. This mountain pass is really precise. Hmm. I think, I think we can do it. I think we should be fine, but uh, I just need to actually get some proper siege equipment through here. Speaking of, I think we should be able to hit through on this city, providing I use the good muskets, like this one. This one's a good musket, so I'll pull you to there, and then we'll go... Oh, yeah, okay. That's good. One hit, two hits, and three. This is my level five. Oh, what a, what a hit. Immediately we pull our tower over to this city and as you can see we can go one, two, three, four, like so. Oh, it didn't take it. Blimey, that's a bit mean. Oh, it's because my great general wasn't next to the city. Lazy, Ryan. Lazy. Oh, well, actually, we can hit Sparta fairly effectively with one attack. I'm just going to have to move my muskets around. Get my, actually, we'll get my trebuchets to move through the jungle. Sure. Why not? Hilariously, Zulu and Persia are still fighting an almighty bloody battle. It's not good for, you know, Persia in the sense that they should really be fighting me, but I'm not going to complain. There's a musket, one attack, two attacks. Oh, it's so close to being done. What about this knight? Ah, uh, the knight's not going to quite make it, but never mind. Oh, flight boosted, refining boosted. This is where Macedon gets silly. I've taken over so many cities. My Eurekas are now already finished in the modern era and now we're working on atomic era. Oh, imagine putting, could you, oh, no, this would be something. Imagine mixing up like this Hellenistic fusion ability with Babylon's ability. I'm pretty sure you can't do that because I think they're both uh, Civ abilities, but imagine a world where that was possible. Oh, it would be nightmarish. You know when you just spot really random pretty things with Civ? I was just looking at this aqueduct. Look at this. It's really cool just watching the water go. And I was like, I wonder where this river goes. The sort of source of it is there. There's a beautiful Alhambra just on the source of the river. So I was just tracking it down. It goes through rainforests and mountains. It spirals around about three Persian cities. Goes all the way down here. Through another mountain range and then eventually goes out to sea. So the source and exit of the river about 15 tiles away. I really like that. The map generation rarely gives you cool rivers like that. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh man, I wish river movement was more of a thing. I wish, that's what I kind of hope about Civ 7. I really want rivers to be even more important into the game because using them for fresh water and for water mills and stuff like that, that works really, really well. I really enjoyed that. But I feel like there's more to offer. Being able to move your troops on rivers would be a really cool thing. So maybe, maybe that's the thing we need. I don't know. Who knows? I think that's Sparta taken. And the reason I just sort of flipped my units around advanced flight, nice, is that now I have a musket that can hopefully just move through, although annoyingly, 
Oh no, their movement is stuck. Oh, that was my good one and everything. There you go. Shows it just is what happens when I try and be clever. Yeah, now we have pretty much free reign to come and attack Ray, uh, Zvanka. And there is the Zulu capital. We fought through our army is spilling through the mountain passes. We rush through at lightning speed. Oh man though, Alhambra is awesome. I've got another military pos policy slot. Oh, it's all good. Amenities. Please, can I just have something that gives me amenities? I'm so desperate for them now. There's nothing. I could get campus adjacency. That could be quite fun. Yeah, let's do that. Science. Science, 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 science is what I need. 400, no, 515 now. Beautiful. So one thing I have noticed. <laughs> oh, they're shy now. They're shy and it's disappeared. But the Zulu capital did have 69, <laughs> 69 strength, which means I think they've got at least one cord unit, which is a problem because cord units and the Zulu are not a fun combination. But as I say, as soon as I pointed it out, it retreated and disappeared. So, you know, never mind. Well, they're actually helping me with the attack. Well, they think they're helping me. What they're doing is actually just getting in the way. <laughs> but um, that's fine. Oh, oh, that was Nalanda. Oh, I should have liberated that. I should have liberated that. I saw the option and I just pressed keep city by accident. That was a scientific city state. Ursa, you numpty. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, I've pretty much won the game. So, you know, it doesn't matter too much, but oh, you numpty. Okay, what sort of damage can we do to Ray? That's the first attack. And here is Jumbo Musketman. You know what? I'm going to name Jumbo Musketman something. The revolutionary own, mm, the iron inventory, the king's sons, the brave dogs. Yeah, go on then. The brave dogs. Attack. Uh, oh, I hate it when they don't have enough movement to use the double attack. What's the point in having a double attack if you don't let me use it? Oh, the game's a tease. That's what it is. It's a giant tease. This is a really good strategy, by the way. If ever you're doing an attack and you've got spare units, what I'm doing is I'm just moving these galleys and keeping them offshore. They're totally pointless, but all of Nazca's defenses keep moving over to attack them. So in terms of being a distraction, they're doing a fine job. It's just funny how you can often abuse the AI's mentality sometimes like that and just attack them with random stuff. I haven't brought any siege equipment to Nazca. It's painful. Now I have a siege tower. That, that, that'll be a bit quicker. Oh man, sometimes looking at these battles is so confusing. It's like there's too many units in a small space. What am I doing? Who am I? Why am I here? These are all valid questions, I feel. Um, why is that not a... Why are you not killing this city? Come on. I've had enough. You move to that. And can I not get another unit round to attack her? The presence of this encampment is being problematic, but I think I can probably trebuchet it to death if I'm lucky. Can my knight finish it off? It can. That means I can get this musket round to do that attack and then this attack. There we go. Look, we solved the puzzle. Oh, so much. So much of the time Civ is basically just one giant puzzle. You're trying to work out what on earth is going on, why you exist. Ah, uh, Ray's taken as well. Well, uh, one thing I did notice is that we're now getting the boosts to atomic era tech, even though I'm in the medieval era. I thought this mod was supposed to stop that. <laughs> I mean, it's because it's because I'm using a ridiculous Macedon strategy. So the, the mod really is doing what it should be doing. I appreciate we're crossing over games a little bit, but you can see with this fight going on for the Zulu, this feels very similar to how some Hearts of Iron games feel, you know, feel at the time. They're manning the borders. They have troops pretty much lining around the entirety of the border. They know I'm about to attack them and they're like, okay, everything's in position, but the field marshals are saying, no, our units are damaged and they're, they have no no organization <laughs> and it's like we can't do anything us is coming with the tanks and by tanks i mean massive knights but yeah oh i i i feel for them this is this is not a stage in a game that they really want to be let's see what zulu do they might do me a solid there we go they did they moved all their troops back that's nice for me i am actually going to pick up siege tactics so i think that is a renaissance era tech i think i already had a renaissance era tech didn't i is that muskets uh let's just double check oh yeah no all of these were renaissance that's fine and we're now 13 turns away from line inventory. So if we hadn't been winning this up until this point, then we would have been fine eventually. Formal wartime with Zulu. It's always going to happen. They do have a thousand military strength. They have a lot of units out. Luckily, I have 3,500. We don't talk about that because it's an obscene amount of troops. But, you know, what are you going to do? And 
The brave dogs lead the charge very bravely. In they go. We're going to just see if we can swarm the capital immediately. Their impi are so powerful and they have garrison commander up in this city. That's awesome. That's, uh, what's his name? Victor doing garrison commander. All units defending the city's territory get plus five combat strength. That's why the city is a bit stronger as well. They're ready for a fight. Unfortunately for them, they appear to have brought archers and impi to a musket contest. But, you know, I, I appreciate the effort nonetheless. Oh, yeah, my knights are not powerful against impi at all. We're going to do a pretty much a 50-50 a mix. My muskets go forward. My knights are going to bravely go sideways. <laughs> they can go and take on Persia. There is such thing as bravely retreating, I'll have you know. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. Should we see how much easier this is with a siege uh, a tower? Uh, yeah, much easier. <laughs> Nazca's fallen already. That's what happens if you actually bring siege equipment to a proper city-state fight. Glorious. Uh, yeah, yes, I will take peace. Actually, it just makes my front line a bit cleaner. Let's see how... Oh, the Zulu respond by charging. Oh, good on you, Zulu. Yes, yes. Fight me. Fight me. This will be a glorious contest. A glorious impi last stand. I love it. I really appreciate this. In we charge. I think I can get my equipment in already. And you can see, yeah, the attacks on Olundi are going to be difficult. I can do it. It's not a problem. But actually, this is going to be harder than you'd think to move my units in reliably. So we're just going to have to keep swapping stuff in and out. One thing I need to do is actually get my siege equipment in which uh, I think I've accidentally put so many muskets on the front line, I can't actually physically get them through. This is bad military planning, but what can you do? Apart from get good. I guess that is something I could do. I could just I could just improve. Um, there we go, a bit of flanking. Oh, I almost got the kill. Never mind. Uh, actually, I can, I can move this round. And do I have a unit that can come through? Oh, yeah, that one can come through. Do I have any more trebuchets that I haven't moved yet? Oh, not quite. Never mind. Okay, we need to get some proper siege equipment in here. Oh, the city is really, really strong. Like, fair play to you. Fair play. I approve of having a little bit more of a challenge. So luckily for me, I brought about 7 million units of siege equipment with me. So the actual siege of this city is not going to be difficult. And actually, I'm just going to start charging units forward. Doesn't even matter if they die. Does not matter. Oh, I think the brave dogs, though, I do care about them. They're probably someone I'm going to try and look after. Oh, no, saying that, brave dogs got killed. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, they're gone. <laughs> no one, no one will see the likes of them again. <laughs> oh dear, oh, f in chat. That's that's brutal. The Zulu were not messing around. They were like, oh, sorry, they're your flag bearers, did you say? Well, um, oh, better get rid of them. Uh, I think is that one attack, two attacks, and yeah, the game's having a good think. We have the victory turn 283 so that was almost 200 turns of only medieval and uh, classical era age I, I had to think about that i've totally lost it this game has actually brought out the insanity in me i've lost it i don't know what's going on so many troop movements oh my lord what fun though. Yes, you should grin. You should grin, Mr. Alex. What a game we've had. Rank six for Catherine the Great? No, 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 no. Alexander the Great, you mean? God, got, got it, got it wrong. Terrible. Buildings constructed. Again, often this is the secret graph that you need to look at to beat deity. You need to be building things all the time. Cities captured a lot. Cities founded, actually, not the most. I didn't found my own cities. I just stole other people's. Wonderful. Great people. That's what happens when you earn Bologna in a game. It's just so good. My culture. I was actually really proud of my culture output this game. Look at that. I was actually winning on Ooh, 30 turns into the game? That's pretty cool. That's just the power of Monuments and Pingala. What a combo. Science? Yeah, we did okay. I thought I was winning on science for quite some time, but nope, it was Korea. Korea were doing well. Do you see that lovely dip? That's when I went into anarchy. Yep, we went into anarchy in this game because of course we did. The score goes up. Religions founded? Nice. Nice. Actually, there's only two religions in the whole of that game, me and Cyrus. Did, did someone, like, send a mammo that we missed? I don't know. Look at that. Look how few wonders got built as well. This was not good for Macedon. I wanted the world to have all of the wonders so I could keep healing my army, and there was not as many as you would hope. <sighs> but what a game. I, I, Macedon, okay, right. 
I find Macedon really difficult to place. They are one of the best war sieves in the sense that they can heal their entire army, no matter where it is in the world, with one city capture. They can get Eurekas that will last eras beyond where you should be. Like combined with regular game, with the scientific Eureka, I think in like the sort of classical medieval renaissance eras, you can be getting 50% of techs right through to the end of the game. It's incredible. No war weariness. It's insane. They're so good. But, but the unique units are terrible and not having any sort of early game is all right i say okay let me clarify the unique units are not terrible it's just that they're not as good as they should be to be classical era units unique classical era units are really 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 tricky because classical era warfare is really tough the ai is really powerful crossbows men at arms walls they can all pop up and ruin your day the deity ai often starts ahead of you and macedon has no early game bonuses apart from these two units yes they're a little bit stronger, they have support bonus, yes, there's great general producing abilities. It's it's fine, but it's this stuff, to World's End, Hellenistic Fusion, and then your unique encampment building. They're the ones that do really well and they happen all the way through the game. Compare these two units to equivalent unique units, like is this swordsman better than the Roman Legion? Ah, no, because Roman Legion can chop out other Roman Legion, so they're quite good. Are they better than Dromans? The Byzantium, for instance, uh, two tile, the, what are they called? Quadra, uh, yeah, the, the, the sort of ranged boats that, that, that hit cities and units really hard. They're, they're insanely powerful. The Mayan Archer? The Nubian Archer? I, I would say all of those are better classical or ancient era units. It's really tough. I think Macedon has a very difficult beginning of game, but if you can have some success, like we did in an early war, yeah. They, they snowball like no other sieve. It's incredible. I mean, if just look, look at that. I was already getting nuclear fission. I found nuclear fission by attacking a city with a horse. So, you know, if that's not that Macedon is good fun to play, I don't know what is. So nice little fun thing is you will be watching this video just before, the day before probably, we have some new Civ 6 content. I am so excited to play Lincoln and Caesar and all kinds of other fun things that the game's going to throw at us. We're going to have a lot of fun. You might find that the upload schedule is a little bit all over the place for a couple of days whilst I deal with new content because obviously when something just gets released you have to film it and then edit it and put it out and it's always a little bit of a scramble towards the beginning of any release. But A to Z will return, don't you worry? And yeah, thank goodness we did it on country. And I, I keep thinking that rather than uh, on leader, that would have been a bit messy, wouldn't it? We'd have to go back and fill in all the other leaders. But no, we're doing it on country and luckily there are no extra countries coming in with this new pack, just leaders. So you never know, we might throw in some of the new leaders or we might just do those in separate series. If you want to help with the A to Z series, don't forget I'm on coffee. I'm on Patreon. The channel supporters are the ones that help me put this through together. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next series and goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra. I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffee, Doughboy91, Sean Critties, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir EC, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan. Thanks everyone.